Ahoy there, Captain Benzi here, coming at you with another developer Q&A video for Eve Echoes. For those of you who don't know, each week NetEase take four questions posed by the community and respond to them, posting that response to the official Eve Echoes uh, Twitter page and Facebook account. That way you can get an idea of what's coming in the game and get some really interesting insights in how development for Eve Echoes actually works. Now, if you have a question you would like to have answered, do check the link in the description down below. It'll take you through to a Google document where you can ask your own questions. And if your question is one that is chosen to be responded to, not only do you get featured in one of my videos, you will also earn a month of basic Omega. Now, I am still out at Masuna Fishing Camp, so usual warnings and apologies apply for things like audio quality interruptions, that kind of thing. I have much less audio control when I'm out here. Anyway, with all that said and done then, let's jump into this week's developer Q&A, which is for the week of the 19th to the 25th of January. Question number one. Would you consider changing the ship rental event to be doable by anyone? Right now, to get the max satisfaction on several of my orders, I need to lend battleships or tier 9, tier 10 ships, while I'm only tech 8 or 7, when I stop buying a mega. This causes problems, because not only do I not have enough ships on the ISK to lend ships of my uh, each, or even my own tech level, I also don't even have access to those ships in the first place. While I'm not someone who's going to channel much effort into this event, I still want to do the event for coupons. Oh my word. I, it, question one straight out of the gate, I can see where this is going. I don't want to channel much effort in, but I still want to get the maximum rewards. No, 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 no. We're not having that. That is not how this stuff works. If you want the maximum out, you need to actually involve yourself. Yes, you're only tech level 8 or tech level 7. You know what? There are plenty of these groups that can still be sent out with those ships. Not everything's tech eight or above or requires battleships or battle cruisers. There are plenty of them that do not. You just have to actually reroll and go looking for them, which yeah, requires effort. So if you're not willing to expend that effort, I can kind of see why you think that perhaps you're locked out of this. Secondly, Eve Echoes is a subscription based game. Once you've hit tech level 8, you should be paying for your Omega each month. This is not a free-to-play game. This is a game that basically asks you to have that Omega running at all times. Sometimes, yeah, you get that you can't necessarily pay for it, but that's why you can then earn uh, enough Plex in the game using ISK to buy yourself a month of basic Omega, or you just have to put up with it. If you don't want to go to the effort of participating, you don't get to sit there and complain that you're not getting the full rewards. Sorry. I kind of get that, yeah, it might be nice for there to be more stuff included for lower level players, maybe a little bit easier to find some of that stuff, but at the same token, sorry, no, your reasoning for this is completely off. You do not get to say, I don't put much effort into this game, I don't want to pay, I don't even really want to play, but I still want to get the maximum out of it. That's not how anything in life works. The answer here from Pillow. The primary purpose of the ship rental event is to put players' spare ships to use, not to push players to obtain ships they do not own yet. Therefore, we would like to see pilots lend out their spare ships, no matter their tech level. Because, yeah, that's also a good point. You can give out a lower tech level ship if they say, oh, we want tech 9, you can give them a tech 7. It works. They say we want a battleship, you can give them a frigate. It works. You just don't get the maximum out of it. For example, you can try fulfilling the golden requirements with ships of the same class but lower tech level, as I've just said. This way you should still get guaranteed satisfaction. You can also rent out your spare tech 8 and tech 7 ships to fill the purple requirements. This is the point I'm getting at, simply put. I don't want to spend too much longer on this because it's getting me angry. You're sitting there saying, I don't want to put the effort in, I don't want to put the cash in to fund this game and actually play it properly, but I still want to get maximum. And thank goodness here, Pillow has basically said, well, you can still participate, you're just not going to get the maximum. Deal with it. Second question. Currently, there is no records of withdrawal or deposit of items in personal hangar or inventory. Will this be implemented in the future? Even 10 records of the most recent will do. Really? Okay, what does Kylem say? Considering that there's no security issue accessing personal hangar or inventory, we have no plans to develop this feature for the time being. What would the point of this feature be exactly? Maybe I'm just angry from that first question and not thinking straight, but... 
like if I drop items into a hangar, then they're my own items and I can just pull them back out again. Like you just scroll through your inventory to see what's there. Or you go to personal assets if you've flown away from that station and you can see where everything is. I don't need a log of the last 10 things that I dropped into my own freaking hangar that no one else has access to. The only time I can see this being of use is if you are sharing your account with another player, which is against the terms of service. And yeah, I'm sorry, development time shouldn't be towards something like that. There's no purpose for it. I, I don't get that one. Maybe, maybe someone in the comment section can fill me in on the key, uh, key issue that I'm missing there. Moving on to the third question and the subtle reference to the uh, to, to the thumbnail and the opening image for this video. Will there be ascension cores for Tornado and Apocalypse? There are lots of ships missing from the current nano cores, unlike the others. Unlike the others, every single nano core exists for a handful of ships. If they put an every nano core on every ship, that's going to take a ton of development time and it's going to make for the most boring events ever because you just grab the same things over and over and over again. Like with, with fear of sounding like a certain Blizzard employee all the way back in what, 2018? Don't you guys have more than one ship? Seriously, are people just flying one ship and then just, oh, well, I'll just go for the nano core for that. Save your points. Like, if you've already got a nice core for the tornado, like I have in the picture at the start of this video, if you've already got a nice core for the apocalypse, and there are plenty of those as well, then you don't need a new core every single Concord Pass. You can use those Concord credits towards either a different ship's nano core, or you can use them to buy materials to help upgrade that nano core. We've had this answered so many times. Why doesn't this ship have a nanocore? Why doesn't that ship have a nanocore? Because these things take time and effort to develop, and <laughs> there are dozens of... Ugh. In the recent past, says Lance Dot, we've released nanocores for electronic warfare, logistics, and industrial ships. However, there are still some ships with relatively few nanocores. We will gradually cover more ships in the future. It's worth mentioning that not every nanocore will have a full coverage. Good. But we will try our best to make every ship have available nanocores. And the Tornado and the Apocalypse both have several. There are options for these, just not Ascension ones. And that's fine. Pick another core. You can modify the graphics of these cores, and if you want it to be a luminous orange, then there's other things you can do there. Like, seriously, can we stop asking this same question over and over? When will my ship get a nano core? There are nano cores for pretty much every ship in the game now, give or take a handful. The basic premise here is that not every ship gets every single nano core. These take time and effort to develop, and if they're going to do that every month, they ultimately even detracts from the purpose of them. If I know that every Concord Pass has a new Hurricane nano core, then it's just oh, what do I? What stats do I get this time? Is it better? It uh, it's boring as all hell. No, I'm all for things the way they are. There are issues with nano cores. The fact that oh, this there's no Ascension core for a tornado or an apocalypse is not an issue. Final question, and I saw this one ahead of time. <laughs> Are there any plans on buffing the Rattlesnake besides the Barguest and Nesta in future balance patches? It hasn't received a buff in the last balancing patch, only the turret faction battleships got buffed, and due to its bonus only on large drones, it lacks in versatility and damage besides a Dominix FE. Well, yes, because a Dominix and a Rattleship, a uh, Rattlesnake are two different ships. They do two very different things. And if you're, t <laughs> why isn't my ship more like this other one? Say people, and then in the same breath, why is the game so stale? Everything's the same. Oh, I despair sometimes. As mentioned in the question, the Rattlesnake has been buffed in the last balance patch which it was. This ship currently serves perfectly as a high resistance ship with a dual weapon system. The usage rate in PvP and PvE is also in a reasonable range, therefore we will not adjust it in the balance version in April. It doesn't need it. Like yeah, you're sitting there going, oh well we don't get like the, the medium drones and small drones like the Dominix does. No, but you also get bonuses to your missiles, which the Dominix doesn't get. You also get bonuses to your shield resistances and just generally are a very tanky ship. I know plenty of people who have Dominix and Rattlesnakes in their hangar and will fly both because they are different ships that do different things. So if you're looking for your, uh, your Rattlesnake to suddenly get bonuses to medium and small drones as well, that's not gonna happen. If you want that, 
fly a Dominix. It's cheaper than a Rattlesnake. A Dominix 2 is cheaper than a Rattlesnake. They do different things. If you want the damage and versatility, you go for the Dominix. If you want to have something that is absolutely brutal when it comes to its resistances, you go for the Rattlesnake, which is one of the tankiest battleships in the entirety of EVE Echoes, with the exception of the Nightmare, but it also does considerably better DPS than the Nightmare can do. Basically, stop trying to fly the rattleship like a Dominix and just buy a Dominix. Like, if you're sitting there saying, well, okay, I want a rattlesnake because of the whole sort of, like, elite factor, the look at me, the bling and all of that kind of thing, then just put a really nice nano core on your Dominix too and soup it the heck up there or use things like integrated rigs with all the isk that you saved from not buying yourself the rattlesnake because it's not good enough for you. It's a different ship. It does a different thing. Please, when people are looking at ships and making a comparison, you can't compare them on one thing and then go, oh, well, this ship's just crap because it doesn't do that one thing as well. I think it was Einstein who once said that if we judged everyone by their ability to climb a tree, then the fish is going to feel mighty stupid. Whereas, obviously, if you then try and judge everyone by their ability to swim or stay underwater, the fish wins. That's kind of the point we're getting at here, and I'm labouring that point, I'm well aware. So, four questions there in this week's dev Q&A, all four seemingly designed just to get under my skin. Um, the Rattlesnake does not need a buff, it is a perfectly viable ship as it is, devs agree. The Tornado and the Apocalypse don't have Ascension cores, and that's okay. Um, the Ship Rental Project is designed for people to actually engage with, so if you want rewards, you do actually have to play the game, and if you want to uh, have a record of items that you drop into your own personal box, grab a note. Notepad. Anyway, folks, those are my thoughts and opinions on this week's developer q and I'm sure you have your own thoughts and opinions down below. I'm sorry that once again we've gone back to ranty Benzie for this week. I don't like being this person, but people ask stupid questions and then wonder why I get angry at them. And I'm sorry, if you're going to come at me in the comment section and go, actually, that was my question and I think you've been quite rude to me, then don't waste the developer's time and my time with such insane questions like seriously the even the, the the best question out of those is probably the nano core one and it's been answered dozens of times already just with different ships when someone says oh why hasn't my ship got a nano core this time around why would you think your answer is going to be different the next time a load of nano cores come around and your ship isn't featured this time like seriously just ah. Oh. Do better with the questions, please. Let's hope next week is an interesting week that actually has some cool questions with some interesting answers about stuff that is actually going to happen in EVE Echoes. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below, folks. Otherwise, happy sailing and see you in New Eden.